if we turn on Time Designer and hit play, right here are your basic controls for eighth notes. And you have a percentage, so you can. There's all sorts of machine templates. So MPC 60, if you want a 58% swing from MPC 60, there you go. If you want to try out the uh, TR-808 straight. And they feel different. Everything feels different. I found a really cool trick i got to show you with the, the, the whole time designer template thing. And now's a good time to do it. So if we go to Core Library, one of the RMX grooves is so many loops. Spectacular. Here we go. So this is James Brown. Kind of a groove. Sounds very much like it. They nailed the, the, the sound of it quite well. But the feel's not quite there. Just so happens, you've got these templates, and then if, if you want, you can make your own templates. And with the Plugin Guru Power Pack, I include um, a whole bunch of time designer templates that I've created, and they are right here under the little triangle next to, to Time Designer. So if I hit play, these completely change the feels. So you can go to Clav Pattern. really forces the notes to be a completely different feel or hip hop. But one that I did, I didn't realize until just recently, the Amen break. Put these two together and it's awesome because here's the Amen break chopped apart timing wise perfectly. It's a great feel now. Here's the original. A little too skippy and so isn't that cool? You just drag any MIDI file you want into this page right here, and Time Designer will take that and use it as a MIDI file for a, a new Time Designer template. That's how I made all of the templates that I have here. Is they, these all came from MIDI files that I created from programming a feel first and then putting it in here. So if I say sparse groove, this is really sparse and it. Because sometimes you don't want loops to just be playing all the time. So Time Designer, change the feel. It's as simple as that. It's so easy to use. I use this more than any other part of RMX. And it will blow you away what you can do if you haven't been here before and that is under the grill right here. You click, it says edit group. And what this allows you to do that's completely mind blowing is separate all the little snippets into different groups. And each group can have its own edit parameters, effects, you can have a compressor on just certain group, or you can have chaos affecting a certain group and not affecting another group. Let's take this sound. I'm gonna make the whole thing dark to start with. This is the easiest way to show you how this works. Okay, it's really dark. Whole thing's dark. I want the snares to pop. I want... I want it to do that automatically for me. How can I do that? Go to Assign, right here, Backbeat. Choose Backbeat. Now, if you click right here, there's two groups. There's the main group, and there's Backbeat. And if you solo, what do you know, Backbeat, two and four? There they are by themselves. So now I can go to my master filter, bring that up, and just those snippets are affected. Let's go to effects and let's put a compressor on those snippets too. So it's so they really I want, them, I want them to hit really hard. What about the kicks? Well, let's just go one and three. And for this one, I want it to be huge compressor as well, but I want to do a reverb first. And then a compressor. So in a matter of a few seconds, I have completely changed this loop. You would not recognize this from where it came from, right? That's because of edit really groups. Useful. Say you take, let's go to the core library. Let's say that we're going along 
And there's so many things that are cool and have just too much going on. Um, like totally insane. Let's say I just want the snares. Go two and four, solo. I just got that really cool element of that snare. But if you go to this part and say go to something else, let's say re-disco. Then you go over here, assign two and four, and mute them. So I'm taking and I'm putting the snare in from this one, from the first part. That's the snare we're hearing, and I've muted the snare from the second part. You can go crazy with this capability. Uh, I hope I'm not scaring you away from using this because it's the coolest thing in the world. But we're going to do something really more on the complex side right now real quickly. Like that kick. That kick is not a standard just, you can't say on the edit group page, you can't say um, one and three and it's going to select all the kicks. It's just going to select some of them. Oh. I'm on part two. If I solo, some of the downbeats are hi-hats. So that doesn't work. So I need to choose a different way. Let's first of all go clear all edit group assignments. So now we're back to main. There's only one. It's got the hi-hat part and the snare here. And the kicks are up here. So it's not even sequentially happening. But there they are starting there. I just want this kick. I don't want to hear any of the snares or hi-hats. So I play the first kick. Go create edit group. First play a MIDI note. So I, I played my MIDI note. I've now made a group. And if you go up here and you say enable the add or remove slice, there's this cool little button that shows up on top of the edit group area. And when I play this note, it says, do you want to remove this slice? You know, because I want to add more to this. So I, click, I play any other note that's not part of that group and it's going to change to say add slice. So I play each kick and I add just the kicks. There's only six of them. So now I can sit solo. Oh, turn off two. There's all the kicks. Let me show you one more example to make sure we got this. I mean, it's it's so easy to use this, and it's something you should use all the time. So I want to make sure you really get it. So let's call up a drum groove. Sphincter. I want that snare to snap a little more. So all you do is you go two and four. Go to effects. Tape compressor, or vintage compressor. Bring the threshold down just a little bit. That's going to sit in the mix really great. Maybe you want the EQs. A lot of times with uh, these sounds, they're kind of conservative on the EQ, so you can... Get that snare to sing a little bit better. You're done. It's going to sound so much better in the mix like this than like that. Might be a little loud, so you go to your gain, bring it down, your gain. So there. That is parts. The ability to take a drum loop and by using these parameters, what the part is isn't what the part's going to be and you've got control over the mix of it in so many cool ways that you really should explore everything you can do with a part. So, All right, so that's all we're going to talk about now for parts. Uh, part three will be about multis and drum kits. Part four is tricks for using the RMX Power Pack. Make sure you go to my website, PluginGuru.com, and check out all the goodies. Both the Power Pack for RMX and for Native Instruments FM8, there's free demo downloads, so you can get a taste of this stuff. Um, you get 10% of the power pack for RMX. And then once you play with it a little bit, you'll want the other 90%. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next review.